everyone, welcome back to the Fabrication Shop. In this episode, we're going to continue our look at the Arduino code in the Olympus project. And we're specifically going to be looking at the functions that are called in the setup section of our code. Now, if you're not familiar with how functions are used in the Arduino, you might want to watch our previous episode. There we went ahead and we looked at how functions are created, what we use them for, and how they can be beneficial in your program. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start by looking at the setup function. So as we start out, the first thing that we're going to notice is it starts as a typical Arduino sketch. Now if we look at the code itself, you will see where we have the code where we assign our pins, the red, green, and blue, and we're setting them as outputs. You can also see where we would initialize the serial port if we were using this for ground testing. Once we get past that point, the setup code changes and it begins to call different functions. And in this case, it's calling the splash screen serial monitor function, the setup micro SD card function, the BMP 180, and the setup MPU functions. And that's all that we have in the setup section. So as we look at our setup code, we see that there's less than 10 lines, 10 actual code lines between the setup for the RGB, initializing the serial port, calling the splash screen, calling the micro SD card function, calling the setup BMP 180 function, and calling the setup MPU function. So now what we want to do is we want to look and see what the functions are behind each one of these. So the nice thing about this is by using the functions with our setup code, it's a short, concise, easy to read, easy to understand setup function. We know what setup's going to do. It's going to activate each one of those items. It's going to set them up. And that's all we really need to know. And now we can move on and see what each one of those functions accomplish. Now let's go ahead and take a look at exactly what the serial monitor splash screen is. One of the things you will notice is that we have stored it in a separate tab. So it's like its own separate little program within the program and it is actually saved as a separate INO file. The other thing that you will see is this is a fairly easy function in that all it does is display information about the program. So again, looking at what's actually there, you'll notice that the whole thing has been commented out because we're not doing ground testing right now. It simply gives us the name of the project, the version number that we're currently working on, our website address. It also tells us what is actually going on with the program. And at the very end, it shows that the initialization process is going to begin. That's all this does. It's a very simple, very easy function. Once it finishes, it returns back to setup to get the next function, which will be the setup of the micro SD card. So the next thing we want to look at is how we set up the micro SD card. One of the things that you will notice is that this too has its own separate tab, which means it's also written like a separate INO file. So the first thing we notice is that it's going to store local variables for writing data to the log. So here we can see the string. It's a local data string called data string. It's initially written as an empty string and we use it as a local variable so that way it helps with memory utilization in the Nano. The Nano has a very small memory footprint. We need to be aware of how much memory we're actually using. After we set up the local variable, the next thing we do is we attempt to initialize the card. And if it's successful, we'll get a steady green lamp. If it's unsuccessful, we see a flashing red lamp. Looking at our code, we'll see that we have skipped printing to the serial monitor that we were initializing the micro SD card. Here's where we actually start trying to initialize the card. That's done with this line right here. 
if the card doesn't initialize, we're going to call two functions. The first function is going to change the LED to red, and the second function is going to cause the lamp to start flashing. The program then stops at this point. There's no sense in going any further. Remember, this is the way we're going to collect and store our data during flight. If the SD card is not working, there's no sense in firing the rocket because we'll have nothing but a extra heavy payload area that while the rest of it may work, we're not going to know if it did or not. It's very important that we have the SD card functioning so that we collect this data. If the card did initialize properly, we again call two functions. The first one changes the light to green and the second one changes the LED to a steady lamp. If we were doing ground testing or during development, we have it so that it prints to the serial monitor that our SD card initialization was successful. While we have the card successfully initiated and we know it's working, we're not done yet with the setup. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create a unique file name for each one of our logs for each flight. Otherwise, it's just going to simply overwrite previous files and we don't want to do that. So then the second part of setting up our micro SD card, we need to go ahead and set up the file name and header that's going to be used for our CSV file. You may remember earlier, we set up the file name flight log. And you can see that here in the declaration section. This is where we named the flight log 00.csv. Now we're going to go back and use that. This time we're going to replace the numbers 00 with the numbers 1 through 99. So here we can look at how the software is going to do this. Now we can't take credit for this. This was a nice little function that we found in another program called Arduino. It will take the 00 and replace them with the numbers 0 to 99. In essence, giving us 100 file names. As it increments each one, it looks to see if that file name exists. If it does, it continues to loop through. And it will do this until it finds a name that doesn't exist. And once it finds a name that doesn't exist, it will then come down and it will create that file name and then open the file so that we can write to it. The file name has to be unique, otherwise it's going to overwrite data from previous flights and that's something we really don't want. After it opens the file, the next thing we want it to do is write the CSV file header we can see that the header is going to be each of the data items that we're going to collect. You need to make sure you keep your data in the same order as the header, otherwise things won't make sense. And so you can see here we have the timestamp, the altitude in meters, absolute pressure, the pitch reading, the roll reading, the yaw reading, and acceleration in all three axes as well as temperature. So all that data is going to be collected. It writes that header file and then it closes out the file. This completes the setup of the micro SD card. Now we're ready to move on to the BMP 180 setup. Our next function is the setup of the BMP 180. Very much like the setup of the micro SD card, it's going to initialize the sensor if it's successful we'll get a timestamp and if it's unsuccessful we'll get a flashing blue light. So again going back and looking at the code we see that it is very similar to what we've seen earlier. As before since we're not using the serial monitor this line is commented out. The next thing it's going to do is it's going to initialize the sensor. If this is successful it will create a timestamp if it's not successful, then we're going to let folks know by changing the LED to blue, by calling the LED blue function, and we start flashing the lamp again. We also stop the program at this point. If it's not working properly, there's really no sense in sending the rocket up. So let's get it corrected, reset the system, and start again. Once we have the pressure sensor initialized, 
the next thing we need to do is we need to get a baseline of the pressure there at the pad. To do that, we're actually going to call another function called readings BMP 180. And we will talk about that in a future episode. That completes the setup of the pressure sensor, the BMP 180. It returns back to setup and there it will start with the MPU 6050 sensor. So the last function that's called by setup is the setup of the MPU 6050. This is our inertial measurement unit. Just like before, we're going to start by initializing the sensor. If it's successful, we'll move on. If it's unsuccessful, we will get a flashing yellow lamp. So we can see that here in the code. Here's where we start to initialize the sensor. Here we call the function LED yellow to change the color of the LED to yellow. And then we start it flashing by calling that same function again, LED flashing lamp. Once again, the program stops. So for each of our sensors, we have to have a successful initiation in order to continue on. If we don't get it, the program stops. You may also notice that we used four different colors during this process. If everything initiated properly, it got a green light and the LED went to a steady state. If we had a problem with our SD card, it was red and flashed. If it was a problem with our pressure sensor, the color changed to blue and was flashing. And here with our MPU 6050, if there's a problem, it changes to yellow and again, it flashes. By using these color codes, we don't need to have the computer hooked up to see what's wrong with the system. We know simply by the colors where the problem is and we can work on correcting it. So once we have the sensor successfully initialized, the next thing we need to do is calibrate the gyroscope. Now that sounds scary, but the nice thing is the library that we're using does the heavy lifting. All we have to do is tell it calibrate the gyro. The library does the heavy lifting in the background to calibrate the gyro for us. Once that is done, and that only takes a fraction of a second, we need to set the sensitivity level for our sensor. We go back to the code and we will see it's a simple little one line set threshold to three. We note in our comments that the default is three. After you fly the model a couple times, you may want to change this depending on what your experience tells you. And once that is done and we've set the threshold, if we were ground testing, we would display on the screen that the calibration is now complete. At this point, it goes back to the setup function. It completes the setup function because this is the last one that's used and it will move on to the loop. So in our next episode where we look at the coding, we're going to start looking at the functions that are used in the main loop of the Olympus project. So we hope you'll join us then. And until next time, wishing you all the best and take care.